Guys, if there were to be one video that would define my channel, it would probably be this video. You guys already know that I am a massive bull on hydrogen technology. Over 75% of my net worth and assets are invested in hydrogen companies because I personally have a lot of experience working in this industry and I understand the immense opportunity over the next decade or so. You guys already know that my portfolio is concentrated on stocks like Nikola, Bloom Energy, Plug Power that are all in the clean energy space. But to be honest, I don't think I'm doing justice explaining this opportunity on my channel myself because I just don't seem to get the point across as easily as other folks. And so instead, in this video, I'm going to be reacting to a CEO interview conducted by a massive clean hydrogen player in the US to understand precisely why we are seeing a pivotal moment for the hydrogen industry and why you probably do want to take advantage of this as soon as you can. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hydrogen has been um, really moving to the top of the list of headlines that focus around sustainability and transportation. Um, and we're lucky to have Mike here, Mike. Um, is you know part of the group that's kind of leading the charge in this regard. There was recently an article that was published, um, Mike, about NextEra, uh, formerly FPL, who is making some big initiatives to um, use hydrogen in um, in their power plants or natural gas power plants. This is an application, Mike. When we were having our conversation a few weeks ago, I don't think we really scratched the surface on this, and it really didn't uh, come to my mind. But my background in being in energy, um, this obviously there's been a huge shift away from coal to natural gas. Um, and, to, and to think about a shift now from natural gas to hydrogen is kind of mind blowing. Do you mind just giving us a little bit of um, clarity on, on what's happening here? Yeah, I agree, Danny. It's nice to see you again. Um, when Nextera makes a move, you want to pay attention. It's very telling about where things are in the hydrogen space when a company like Nextera decides to go and, and go big. If you look back on the history of this company, it's a company that's just, I'd say, kind of always got it right when it comes to being a cost-effective, reliable utility. When they decided to move out of coal, they did it in a big way and at the right time. When they decided to get into natural gas, it was the right time. When they decided to get into nuclear, right time. So they've been, I'd say, just expert at this whole energy transition and how do you stay ahead of the curve. This move into hydrogen, I, I think we've first got an inkling of it, it was about a year ago or so, they announced a pilot. And I thought, this is sort of how they operate. They'll, they'll do a serious pilot. And then when they go, they kind of go all in. And that's what they've done in saying they're converting their whole natural gas fleet, which is like 16,000 megawatts to hydrogen. It's a, it, it can be, depending on how they do it, it can be a really good use of hydrogen as a means of decarbonization. And I think it's just another big step in this whole evolution of the market, development of the market for clean hydrogen and positive, I'd say, for trucking. Because I think as you and I discussed last time, the more use of hydrogen you have, the more infrastructure you'll develop, which continues to be like the missing link here. We, we, we know how to produce it, that's for sure. Um, more and more people are figuring out how to consume it and where does it make sense uh, in terms of where we should do it first and then next. But you've got this gap, this missing infrastructure. So when you have a big, huge utility, come in as a big major player and what exactly is that big utility well it is next era energy for those that don't know next era is the largest utility company in the entire world by market cap and they're also the biggest investor in renewable energy resources like solar and wind projects and they have a very laid out plan for net zero these guys are already ahead of the curve when it comes to adoption of new technologies, as we've seen over the past 20 years when they moved from coal to natural gas. And what has this company done? Well, they have most recently launched a hydrogen only project and dedicated a bunch of their resources to investing in green hydrogen projects, particularly a 500 megawatt wind project that's going to be accompanying hydrogen fuel cells. This is going to not only create demand for hydrogen fuel, but this is going to build out a great infrastructure of hydrogen over the next couple of years, especially on the backing of one of the most trusted brands in the electrical utility space. This is going to play very well in the hands of any hydrogen company, whether it be Nikola Motors that develops hydrogen fuel cell trucks, or whether it would be somebody like Bloom Energy that develops servers that run on natural gas and hydrogen to allow office spaces to run independently. This is a very big shift in this ecosystem. And we've already seen so many other investment firms like Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, and Goldman Sachs already push their own narratives 
about how hydrogen is going to be probably the biggest investment opportunity by sector over the next couple of decades. And so I definitely want you guys to keep this in mind as you continue watching this interview. Yeah, I think that, that brings up an interesting question. Um, John Kingston once said about renewable fuels is, imagine taking the United States and turning it up where California is on the bottom. And he's like, that's basically where all the renewable fuels end up going to because there's so much incentive there, right? Um, and so when you don't have enough of whatever it is, renewable fuels or hydrogen, um, there's, it's going to go flow to the easiest places or the most economical places for it to be. Is there any threat in having such a big demand pull from, um, from, from power plants that it then slows down the adoption on the transportation side, just be from a, from a pure supply perspective? You know, well, well, I think that that could happen. I think it's more likely to have just the opposite effect, that, that this is going to be something that accelerates and makes easier the adoption of hydrogen in, in other industries. If you think of, if you think of this application that they're, that they're pursuing, um, in the scheme of things, uh, using hydrogen instead of natural gas for power generation, no matter how you look at that, it's going to be relatively expensive. Um, it's not going to be, I'll say, the you know the highest value use possible. If I compare that to trucking, where there's limited options, uh, again, different from power generations, where there's a lot of options for decarbonization. In the case of heavy trucking, very few. I think they've explored batteries, and it just seems like the, the momentum, at least for long-haul trucks, is going to be hydrogen. So you've got this very high value use, um, big demand. And I think that the significance of next year's move and this conversion of the fleet is really going to be that there's going to be yeah, more infrastructure. And that's why I think they said they want to be not just consuming hydrogen right where they are, but they want to be out in the infrastructure business, building out the infrastructure that is going to be absolutely necessary. Like a, it's a precondition to the adoption of hydrogen for trucking. Also, I, I guess I wouldn't worry, Danny, about there not being enough hydrogen. It happens that uh, you know what they want to do is make hydrogen from electrolysis using renewable energy, and you're talking about the largest renewable energy company in the country. That's Next Era. So they've got plenty of hydrogen, far more than they're going to need for uh, their own natural gas fleet. And I suspect when they talk about we want to get into infrastructure, it's because they want to move hydrogen to other markets, markets like long haul trucking. Is what does infrastructure needs? Is it can we re, can we use some of the infrastructure that's there, like say natural gas, or is this putting up brand new pipelines? I think that when it comes to long haul trucking in, in the initial days of the adoption of hydrogen, realistically, that's not going to be pipelines. Even if you could use existing infrastructure like natural gas pipelines, which you can, if you're talking about blending in a relatively small amount of hydrogen into the rest of it being natural gas. Yeah, you can do that. But if you're talking, Danny, about, you know, are you going to build out new hydrogen capable pipelines? I mean, they exist. We have a couple hundred miles of them. So yeah, absolutely, it can be done. But it's a very time consuming process, capital intensive process. And it also assumes that you know how much hydrogen you want, when and where. I mean, that, that's why you have a natural gas pipeline distribution system is because over time, everyone figured out where do you want it? How do you want it? In what quantities? And then it made sense to have a pipeline. In the case of hydrogen, and I'd say this is a great example, long haul trucking. When I talk to the truck stop companies, when I talk to the truck manufacturers, they're all of the view that hydrogen is going to be adopted. They need to be ready for it. They need to build up to serve the hydrogen needs of trucking. But I haven't met one yet who said, I know I'm going to need this much in this place at this time right now. So to me, the, the more likely practical means of distributing hydrogen to serve long haul trucking at truck stops is going to be either gaseous tube trucks or cryogenic storage trucks shuttling back and forth between sources of production and these refueling stations as they figure out how much they need when. And it's only gonna be, I'll say, many years from now, where it's gonna be such an adoption of hydrogen, so much use of hydrogen by trucking, and it's so well understood as to how much is needed when. And I'm talking about sort of like it is for diesel. When you know how much you need and where you need it, then I think you'll see these pipelines get built out because when there's that kind of volume and that kind of certainty about what's needed where, it makes sense to make the capital investment and to go through the long, difficult permitting and all the other issues that go with building pipelines. The CEO mentions yet another fantastic point right here, which is that trucking companies are going to be the ones that are going to take advantage of this Nextera investment the most. For example, it's already predicted that around three quarters of global green hydrogen will be produced and used locally by 2050, which means that you're not going to need to invest in this massive pipeline ecosystem where you either blend hydrogen into natural gas or you create hydrogen specific pipelines and o-rings and whatnot 
to transport this fuel, which has obviously been the main concern for those that are skeptical about hydrogen. And so the key idea here is that due to the decentralization of renewable energy, it's going to be much easier to integrate hydrogen into our energy ecosystem than it is, say, natural gas. The difference between natural gas and hydrogen is that natural gas still needs to be combusted to be used properly, except for in something like a fuel cell where the efficiency is significantly lower. And natural gas also obviously needs to be dug out of the ground using methane and whatnot, which is obviously carbon intensive. Whereas hydrogen can be made from renewable resources like a solar farm or a wind farm. That is something you cannot do for natural gas. And when you make this hydrogen, you can store it on tanks cryogenically and whatnot, just like gasoline fuel, which is obviously an ecosystem that we're so familiar with over the past 100 years. And that makes it significantly easier for us to scale hydrogen over the long term and for other companies to create use cases around hydrogen because it is very similar to the way that we use natural gas. It is simply a cleaner form of natural gas, which connects the gas ecosystem to the renewable energy ecosystem. And that is exactly the power of something like green hydrogen and why I have been so vocal about this investment opportunity. And as we all know, to decarbonize our ecosystem, we can't rely on batteries because they can only store energy for a short amount of time. And because of that, somebody like Goldman Sachs has already created a carbonomics report where they outline the fact that due to this rapid demand for decarbonization, the market for green and clean hydrogen could surpass over 1 trillion by 2050. And that doesn't even include something like blue hydrogen, which is sequestered hydrogen, or even regular hydrogen that might be produced using methane reforming and whatnot. And so overall, if you're an investor in the sector, Keep in mind that the growth is significant and the value proposition for our society and to bring down climate change is right there. All you need to do and exercise is patience and making sure that you are up to date with what investments you have, whether that be in the private sector or in the public sector. But as usual, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value in this video. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of what the backend CEO said and whether or not you're going big on hydrogen stocks for the long term. But as usual, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.